So this is a different angle than before. I know I've done another unboxing video in this sort of fashion where I lay out all the stuff for you to see in a better fashion than me just opening it up on screen and show you my reaction and crap. But there's a legitimate reason for this one to be in this position so you can see everything that's going on. And it involves this. So, uh, I have a confession to make. It's not just the Lego part, because there's a lot of people that do that, but this part in particular. I used to collect these a lot. So much so that I have all of Season 2 and Season 3, and almost a complete collection except for one set of Season 4. Season 1 I did not get into until Season 2 came out, and these were all discontinued. From lego themselves now i have to go about purchasing them from other websites such as ebay amazon and other secondhand retail uh online sources most places will not have them in store as they are not legally allowed to <laughs> this was the very first set to come out for the ninjago brand and this is just a test to see if this is a good angle and whether or not this is actually a good idea now, some backstory for this particular set. As the very first set to be released, they, like myself, wanted to do a test. This was sold at $6.99 and consisted of two minifigures, along with a basic action set. That was all. It was something to get any traction to release a full line of later. At $6.99, you would think that... Uh, it's not so much. In American USD is not a lot, and you'd be right. However, after something like this goes completely off the market and you have to buy it as a collector's item, the price for these shoots up incredibly. Now there are other sets that are priced at around 100, 150, that are now selling for 300 on Amazon pages. Now they're not really trusted or backed, but you can always find other prices for them, and so much so that there's a markup for one specific set that has a nine times increase. I got lucky to get this set for $22 new. Now I'm not going to say the person's name just in case I have any presumptions for this, but there is obvious damage in an entire cut into the box. And this little tab right here, which you're supposed to access into the actual set is already opened. For being an unopened set, that's a really, really big red flag. But it might just be a little bit of damage that just happened to come along the way. So I'm going to give benefit of the doubt, and I'm just going to start building. Alright, so there doesn't seem to be any box damage like I've already done. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Alright, here we go. Oh, nice. Instructions, a baseboard, and everything is packaged nicely. Wow. So it was really just raw damage, okay. So I'll just take this off screen and then I'll just start up with the building. I'm going to try and show you everything the best I can with this camera angle. If there's anything that you can't see, I'm going to apologize now. This is a test for everything. Hmm. It also seems that there's a little bit of damage on the book itself as well. Oh well. For something of this value that was originally $7 but is now a collector's item, already and I have my hands on it, I'm perfectly fine paying a little bit extra to make sure that it's actually refundable, returnable, and at a new selection. And with bags like this, I'm already seeing a pretty, pretty, pretty good seller. Well, we just get started I guess. I'll move the book down here just so it's out of the way the most. And now probably the least favorite part of any other video that anyone does Legos with. Separating out the pieces. To others it might seem tedious or unnecessary. To me it gives me a little bit of security because it at least gives me the idea that I have every piece. I believe I used to sort them by color and then by shape or size. I can't really remember. The last time I really purchased a Lego set, I think was maybe 2014, 2015. So this feels really alien to me and really nostalgic at the same time. But it also might just be jitters trying to think 
of this as a new idea. Look, it's a penis. As I'm sorting these out, I'll give a little bit more of a backstory. The show first came out roughly 2011, the exact same year that they released this set and others in the first gen, I'll say. And once again, I didn't know it existed. I only got into it when season two came about, the show and the sets. And I just kind of got interested in it, seeing it on Cartoon Network. And after a while, I just enjoyed the show, and then life started to catch up, and I couldn't find the show anymore, it seemed. And I don't know if it was just my family losing interest in daytime TV and going on to just YouTube like you're seeing now, <laughs> or just in general what happens with TV. Eventually, you just run out of episodes, or the, se the series ends or something happens and the company isn't funded by the studio anymore. But as it turns out, they're still making episodes. And I thought it ended with like season five. They're apparently on season 12. They're making season 12 right now as we speak, I guess. <laughs> so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, looks like we start off by building uh, one of the Skeletons, and I have to check on the name. Give me a sec. So the skeletons are actually only featured truly as a big part in the first two episodes, and that's what I consider to be season one. But if you look on the actual webpage or where their show is now, it'll tell you that their season one consisted of what I would consider season one, two, and three. <laughs> So I don't really know what a proper timing of everything is, but the skeletons were really only featured in season one, which would be episodes one and two, and this would happen to be Bone's Eye. Now I'll show you really quick, if you happen to see his little loincloth area, uh, this is supposed to be the skeleton of ice, and... Just like the four ninja, it's supposed to be a element that they can control. And there's uh, four soldiers and four generals of each element for the skeletons. There we go, Bones Eye. So that's pretty cool. Let's start off with that. And my guess is that this is supposed to be an extra piece just in case you lose an arm. I believe more so than not, this is actually not in normal sets, but because of something this size, I think they felt it was necessary. I don't really remember receiving more skeleton arms than normal. And now the very first ninja you ever truly see in both the show and the sets, this would be Kai. And he is the fire ninja. Going back into the episodes, I might be wrong in saying the first ninja because technically I think Sensei Wu is the first character that you ever truly see and then he, he's walking up to Kai and his sister Nia. This is the true first of the four ninjas anyway. <laughs> There's Kai. Now into the actual physical set. First we need to build the earth scythe. We'll start off with this and then we place... No, actually not this. It's a square one. Okay, square. Furthermost corner, make sure that it's at least outward at a good angle. Yeah, that should be fine. Two of these facing in. And then the last setup for this position, probably. There's that. And we've grabbed this baseboard here. And then we build this the Earth Scythe. Scythe of Earth. I don't really remember how they called it on the show basically means the same thing but this was to be used by the earth ninja Cole what direction does this face this way yeah all right there's the first half of the set characters and scythe I'm gonna change my grip now I guess <laughs> now to build the full actual set Baseboard. Start off by trying to get into the same position as the mapping. Now, if I ever do make a mistake at all, especially with a piece like this, or even this really, where you need nails 
to get them out from underneath. I do have a piece remover from very old sets. I'm not very old, I'm just a few years old. But <laughs> once LEGO actually came up with the idea to have something to remove pieces like that, I was very, very happy because I can't tell you how many times I've broken my nails just trying to get off a piece that I didn't put on correctly. Now, if you're upset by seeing jump cuts of me building this and not talking in between, just understand I'm not making this to be, well, I'm not making this to be like a proper just straight build video. I want it to at least be cut up so it's enjoyable to watch for others just coming into the channel that aren't really Lego people or even Lego Ninjago people like myself. Uh, I really just want this to come out as a way to introduce to new videos on the channel. Oh boy, here comes the po Oh, yes, it's finally staying up correctly now. <laughs> there we go. Now with enough weight. <laughs> you can probably tell what this is supposed to be uh, the more I get into it. But I'll be able to show off everything that this is supposed to do. I've always hated hair or dust getting on these. Which brings me to my next point. For all those other sets that I used to have, I used to have them on display because I was very proud of what I had built. But along doing that, after keeping them out for so long, they start to collect quite a bit of dust. And after I started to lose interest and not be able to do them anymore, well, I, I wouldn't say lose interest. Like I said, not being able to like see the show after a certain bit, I kind of lost touch of what was coming out at the time. And I just sort of didn't know what to build, didn't know why I was building. But I originally had all of them out on display and they collected dust. And after the time of losing placement, I did store them away. Now, there is some signs of damage, just pieces strewn about, falling apart because they are jam-packed and giant toads. But for the most part, they're all really intact. Uh, but it's just dust right now and trying to find good spots to do anything with them. I really want to go back through every set for the Ninjago collection and keep building them and collecting them myself. And that really just comes with you guys letting me know if this is a good setup, if this is at all a good video, and really telling me if it's even fun to watch this. Now, for those interested in actually watching the show, you can still watch the show. It is no longer on Cartoon Network as far as I know, but you can watch uh, every episode up until the season right before the season that they're making right now, which I believe is 12. But season 11 is still not fully licensed to be shown, but it's on Amazon and you can purchase the episodes. Or if you have Amazon Prime, you can watch every episode for free. That's something that I found out and I really want to watch every episode. And uh, hopefully after collecting all the sets of season one, the first two episodes, I kind of want to do a stop motion attempt of the first two episodes and see if they're actually any decent using the same voices, maybe using the same sound effects, but stop motion has always been something that kind of piqued my interest in like claymation and just animation in general. So here's to the future, I guess. <laughs> now comes the part where you just assemble bamboo. And as someone who's known what Lego can do, this being their first set, I thought it was actually really neat the way that they came up with the design for this to make it look like an actual bamboo stock? Is that the right word? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, that shouldn't flip over. Here we go. Put this here. Good. And where's the neck? one or what does the next one look like if at all in the future if i don't get into movies television acting producing directing like i really want to lego has always been something that's piqued my interest my mother says that with the way that my brain works and the way that i like building and i've always enjoyed uh welding and construction i would probably do well with a job 
at Lego, but I feel as if, like, that's just being disingenuous to the people who actually do work over there and have put in a lot of time and design things like giant sets for, like, the NFL and everything, or just sets like this. It takes a really good mind to come up with a design, not to put it together, but to come up with it. And I don't know if that'd be a really good match for me because I've never been truly a creative person. I really just like following directions and it's really just soothing. There we go. I think that's it. I'm just going to take it back with me for a second just to make sure that it's pressed down well enough so it won't fall apart. And that seems to be it. I'll just take the extra pieces away real quick. Trying to get the skeletons to stand has always been something that I've hated. You kind of have to lean them back if you want them to stand up. But then again, that's with all the weight of their weapons that they have to hold. Most minifigures hold themselves up pretty decently. So, uh, yeah. This is Ninja Ambush, the very first set, which is roughly for $7. I got it for $22 brand new as a collector's item. Uh, you can purchase them basically uh, at the exact same price nowadays for pre-owned. Uh, if you're okay with that, go ahead. I am kind of a stickler and also weird about pre-owned items. I prefer brand new open packaging and uh, I guess we just jump into action. If you do think that this was a good idea on my part to build these sets, uh, the instructions do come with some sample sets that you can purchase in the future, and I do have a few more of these, and if you're interested, leave a comment down below. These are in the future to come. But with all that being said, I guess there's one thing left to say. Have a nice day. Look, it's a penis. <laughs>